Welcome back to our version of boat life. Currently midway through replacing our prop and blacking the hull of our boat. But how do we get here? Well, just over a year ago, we found Annabelle and decided she'd be a good home for us. This is a clip from our first video. Ah, the joy of being fresh, a little naive and just starting out. Spencer here kicked us off with a cracker comment and I quote, Just what the boating community needs, yet another clueless couple floating around causing chaos and clogging up moorings. Now I don't know that we've caused any chaos, but we sure did spend as much of the summer as we could clogging up those moorings. Until of course we hit a rock and bent the prop, which lands us here in the dry dock tackling a pretty big job. Last week was part one, and so far, so good. Subscribe to the channel and follow along. And hey Spence, would you look at us now? Ready for round two? There's your second coat bean. Yeah, Easier on the first? Yeah, not too bad. Do you have any words of wisdom for anyone else looking to black their own boat? Oh, it's not that bad as long as you do a good job. Pretty easy, I suppose. Slap it on. Well, as long as you've prepared it all right, I guess. Then you should be all right. While Paul got on with the blacking, I made a lot of coffees, drank a lot of coffees, and pretty much hung around to give you fun facts that I myself am learning as we go along. See what it looks like on the bottom? It doesn't get, even though it's not black. Yeah. It doesn't get, uh, it's too far from the end. I asked a silly question yesterday. Why or how do you black the bottom of the boat? Um, and apparently the air doesn't get there. I don't know about these things, so I just assumed you would have to like somehow black the bottom, but it's not necessary. The air doesn't go there, and so oxidization doesn't happen, and it's air okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All pretend. All pretend. Fake it till you make it. Next, it was back to fitting the prop. Crouch down at the stern and figuring out how to remove the cutlass bearing. Just struggling now to get the cutlass bearing out. Uh, it's pretty corroded. Try to heat it up and then hit it out with a slide hammer, but it's not budging. So my next option is to cut it and then try to collapse it. So, wish me luck, folks. A bit harder than I thought it was gonna be, but yeah. is kind of a one-man job. I just step in and I'm available to hand over tools and fetch and carry things but there's no hard graft on my part. So while I'm not currently engaged I will fill you in on some things that feel quite different being on a boat and a hard standing dry dock. Because of the blacking we're doing all our washing in a bucket and not letting it go down the drain and then pouring it out. This is just to give the blacking the best chance at adhering to the boat and not causing any havoc. Uh, it's not really necessary but you know Paul he wants everything to be perfect so we are reserving all the water and then throwing it out later. 
We also have a very interesting power hookup. So normally in the marina we plug into shore power, but we also have the use of our solar panels. So generally on a boat you switch between the two depending on where you are. This little unit here, you'll either click down to use the inverter, i.e. the solar panels, or put it up and there we are plugged into shore power. This blue cable runs from the boat to this little contraption where we have the low maintenance task of pound by pound popping in coins to essentially keep the lights on. Just cutting a groove and folding it, cutting and folding it. See what happens. Time consuming dilemma. Mm. The man deserves a beer. Please. Coming right up. I mean, this is amazing progress. If it was that, it would be amazing progress. <laughs> what I mean is, it's been slow, but you've got a good chunk out there. Oh, that thing's like this long. Oh, no. Paul is going to get as far as he can with that tonight. It has literally taken the better half of a day just to cut out that little piece that he's done and obviously once he's cut right the way down he should be able to bend that whole thing and then pull it out. A very tedious and tiring job as with all things uh, just do what you can with the tools that you've got. I'm gonna get dinner on, close this one here for the day and see what we make progress with Tomorrow. False alarm! Paul just called me. He is getting it out. Wow! <laughs> that was the longest day for the smallest job. Oh my. <laughs> you did it though. Blue work a plan. Yeah, come out. Yep. And that's that, Hog. Better make sure I make the dinner extra special tonight. There he is. Off to Paul Munro, gearing up for coat number three of the blacking. Piece of cake. <laughs> I just finished the other side of the boat and just felt like I'd let fall just do this last quarter. So super tough job. Very hard to stay as clean as I have. Do you have yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. My lunch ready. What do you want? Anything you want, you I'll make it for you. You've been sitting inside doing nothing the whole day. Feet up. 
feet up watching the telly. You know me. I can't even get me some lunch, Rupta. What do you want, love? Anything. Anything? Anything. Oh, could I have a bunny cha, please? Thanks. Sure thing. I mean, it's not going to be ready in two minutes. You said I could have anything. Yeah, just going to have to wait for that one. It's a tall order. That's it. Uh, you made nothing. Nothing enough for two <laughs> nights. <or whatever. laughs> I heard a good joke for us gals who cook dinner every night. A man walks into the kitchen behind his wife and says, Honey, what's for dinner? So she turns around and says, Nothing. He says, OK. He goes on. Comes back the next night and says, What's for dinner? She turns around and says, Nothing. And he says, But we had nothing last night. She says, Yes. Made enough for two nights. So there wasn't a grub screw in yeah, there? Yeah, was missing. So what have you done? So I just uh, got an M8 bolt, which is the thread that's in there, and made my own little grub screw. Um, hopefully it works. Smashing. I don't know, we'll find out in a few minutes. So you're putting the next, that tube in, back in? Oh, the prop shaft. Yeah. Or no, I'm putting the cutlass bearing, but this is what holds the cutlass bearing. Okay. But they um, made some sort of a MacGyver plan there. On that thing. Is that why there wasn't one? Oh, well, that's why it was so hard to get it out. Ah. Yeah, because look here. That's what the new one looks like, like smooth. That's the new one. And then look at the one that was in there. It looks like it's been grinded with a grinder to fit. Yeah. Uh, and it's a different length. But they're meant to be the same. Yeah. So, I don't know, I think they might have bought the wrong size and then just grinded it to fit. Cowboys. Dodgy. Cowboys. Cowboys. There's me making my own growth screen. <laughs> <laughs> This is the hour, the darkest place Dante's inferno, the devil's maze It's a good world Good world gone bad on it yet because uh, we're going to be taking it out and then I'm going to have grease all over it. So I'm pushing it in by wiggling it, essentially. Yeah, until I hit there. So what I'm going to do is that that flange that's on the inside, that, I'm going to push the shaft into it all the way, make a line and then move it like 20 mils back out and then that's how it must sit. And then I'm going to put this prop on because I need to get the distance that the prop must sit here and then we can cut it. Okay, cut this bearings in. So now we just got to sort the shaft out, put the prop on, but I'm going to go on the inside. So I'll also pull it from the inside, but you're just going to wiggle it like that. Okay. Okay. Got it. down in the engine bay and he's just dry fitting everything so that he's sure that everything is in the right place and then he can go ahead and finalize the job the thing the prop whatever you say <laughs> give us the DL so I made it the shaft and I'm replacing this uh, coupler I mean it was all right it wasn't leaking 
but seeing we've got the whole thing out, I'd rather just change it because it's like 15 quid. Um, and to, to put that on, you have to take the whole shaft off again. So, for 15 quid, might as well do it now. So that coupler sits on there and that goes onto the hull. And then that uh, dripless stern gland goes on the side of it. And then I've got the overall kit for it there. So, the new face with the, the, the double seal on it. Um, that you replace it over there. So the part with this part remains, and you just replace the seals on the outside. The bearing on the inside still looks fine. So there's like a a bearing on the inside here. Yeah? I'm just going to clean out the or the flutes or whatever you want to call it. The the and then refurbish that, so I'll we'll take this off, put the new one on, slide that onto the shaft, all ready to go. Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. Ready to see another 10 years, hopefully. Well, once I've refurbished that, then I'm going to put the drive shaft on, grease all that up, how it says in the manual. It's like a little leaflet manual inside there, so I'll just do it exactly how they say in there and then hopefully it works we don't sink this is not a how to it's a how I do there so. you go. <laughs> I've just found the biggest joke in the world narrowboats never cease to amaze me you have the water cooled bearing which comes up on this pipe with two shuttle valves and that goes into this boss over here, I'm sure you all know of it. That boss isn't even drilled through into the weed hatch. So where they expect the water to cool the bearing, I don't know. If you look down on the weed hatch side, there's no hole to be seen. What's an absolute joke. This is power service, open for business. Yep. Serving out this here side hatch. Sold out. It looks as though it's a pretty nice day out, but I would say over yesterday and today, we're officially in autumn, as in, I need to stop wearing sandals. It's officially, officially getting cold. And beer's gone. Beer? It's like 9am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just kidding, it's like 2 in the afternoon. I'm gonna keep my engineering mind going. Easy access here from the bar area. Just getting a mini one today. Starter. Don't want things to get crazy. Starter. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You don't see your hat. Okay, let me try again. Wondering how it could go so wrong, but you didn't call for it. It turns a bit and now it's turning, yes, it's like still. Okay. Flowers and the birds and bees, then all the lights are all affected. Tell me when again, I'm taking my hands off. I'm holding. I'm holding. Okay. I'm breathing out. Engine bears. Not my vibe. So you're at the end stages now? Yeah. I've got that all in. Um, it's all been aligned. I didn't have to realign the engine. The spigots fitted together fine. I um, just uh, measured it so that I got uh, not more than one and a half D 
to the front of the prop and the boss in the back of the boat. So, yeah, I think that's about right. I'll see how it goes. So you're just going to tighten those up now? Yeah, and then I've got to tighten the prop up. It might seem to you that this has come together fairly easily in this nicely edited bite-sized video. But let me tell you something, it has been a day and a half for Paul. Every step there's been something unexpected or something additional that you would have thought you wouldn't have had to do. And there's all the questions uh, that come with a job when you've never done it before. So we've been very grateful to have some great minds around us and some helpful people online and stuff. Paul will thank them later. But yes, it's been a nice combined effort, but an effort it has been. So here's a reminder to look at life that's pouring into you. And so my friend, let me tell you once again, and you know that it's true. Forget about seeing it. It's got that bath piece. Yes, yes. Should, should mess it. I was just saying there's a piece, an extra piece that our old shaft didn't have. The old one just had the nut. Yeah, it but didn't have that anode on the end. But it's meant to have. I can't remember how close that. it was. So maybe that just came off the old one. Yeah, maybe. Not that I'm in a professional, but uh, yeah. well, but close after this experience. Yeah. yeah. Now this little washer here, it goes in the keyway, uh, and that's lock washer. Then you just bend this over, but I'll bend. The other one over, because it's easier access. So, I'll bend this one over. So that goes in the keyway, like that. And then that was that bends over. So that goes in there, like that because of the shafts in there, this thing can't spin and the key on the shaft, this, is holding it still so then if that goes in there that comes in there and that gets bent over so that this can't unturn because it's locking it make sense? yep so that's what I have to do on that one and then, it's done Job's a good in. Job's a good in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, don't celebrate just yet. You can only celebrate if there's no water pissing in once you pull the strip up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I drilled the new hole. There. Hold on. Up there, I drilled the new hole. So the water goes in through here comes up out there to cool it. Can you believe they made a boat and left the hole undrilled? Don't, don't know. Maybe we're making a cock up. I don't know. I'm not a boat mechanic. No. How would you fit a pipe to a closed hole? I don't know. That's my sentiments exactly. Yeah, anyway. I don't know if you can see there. See there? There's like a little mark there. Yeah. Not, not really, but yeah. So that mark I made there, so that if this bearing twists, then I can look through the weed action and feel with my finger to see if it's moved or not. Ooh, clever Trevor, eh? Clever Trevor. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, hopefully, that'll be it. Just cool.
you so much for watching and thank you to our patrons for your added support. The prop is in. Now we still have to wrap up this job, so we'll see you next week for finishing touches and that all important, rather nerve wracking moment of testing whether this all comes together and actually works as we get back in the water and head on home. <laughs>